Hello, I thought I'd do an IT video for a change about the Elgato HD60 Pro uh, video capture card which I installed recently on my computer <coughs> because the computer, although it can play the game as fine, it really struggles with playing a game and recording it um, at a decent frame rate. <coughs> if you look at some of my Fallout videos, it's, it's struggling to manage five frames a second sometimes and that's not really good enough for an action game. Um, but this card can do up to 60 frames per second. It takes the load off your CPU basically and it works. Um, I had some difficulty getting it to work though and I'm going to talk about fixing those things so that you can get yours to work if you've got one. Um, I guess on different computers you're going to get different sets of symptoms and difficulties, but this is what works for me, so maybe it will work for some of you. Um, the card plugs into a slot in the back of the computer. You can see the little type of connector here. Um, <clears throat> so I took the back off the computer, or the side in fact, plugged this in, put it all back together, switched it on, nothing. <laughs> it did not boot. Right. Um, I thought, darn. Okay. So I took it out, put it back in again. It kind of booted, but got to the BIOS and then crashed as it started to load Windows. And I thought, okay. I took it back off again. Wobbled it, because it doesn't go in the card slot very firmly. It, it literally just sits there loosely. Um, and actually another issue with it is is on the back plane of the computer you have to plug in your HDMI cables and stuff according to the instructions um, and there wasn't actually room because the metal frame of the slots was in the way so by a combination of leaning the card over and screwing it in that position I could get the computer to boot and plug the cables in <coughs> But it still wouldn't boot through Windows. It still crashed on booting Windows, even after this. Um, but it could get as far as the BIOS, which is the startup system. You know what? On the front of your, on the opening screen of your computer, you might get some black and white writing or a big logo that comes up. Not the Windows one, but before that, uh, where it says something like "Press Dell to enter setup" or "Press F1 or F2 or whatever it is on your machine." F10 possibly on some. <coughs> Um, so I thought, well, okay, if it can get this far, let's go in there anyway and see if I can have a look at the settings. So I pressed Dell on my machine um, <clears throat> and got into the uh, BIOS setup, the basic input-output system. This is what the computer uses to get going so it knows enough to be able to read and load up Windows. From then on, it can do your stuff. But when it starts up, it doesn't know anything. Okay. Um, other than how to detect what kind of kit it's got, basically. Um, and then it reads what to do with each piece of kit so that it can know how to run your stuff. Um, and I rummaged around in the settings, um, looking, and I found one setting in the peripheral section of the setup called Intel Smart Connect Technology. And in there, there was an ISCT configuration setting which was off or disabled. So I thought, OK, we don't know what it is. <coughs> Switch it on, enabled it. Then I did F10 to save and exit. And the computer booted into Windows. So whatever it was, this Intel Smart Connect Technology, it needed it on my motherboard. Um, which I can't even remember what type of motherboard it is, and I was looking at it just now. Some begins with a G, forget, forget their name, I don't know. Anyway, big name, not like Asus, but another one. Um, anyway, <clears throat> got it loading up <laughs> at last. <clears throat> it was a bit worrying because I thought maybe the card is dead, but no, it's just uh, somehow it needed to be detected by the setup. So. There's nothing, of course, in the instructions about that. Indeed, the instructions consist of those diagrams. <laughs> Plug it in. That's basically it. <clears throat> um, 
um, and some important safety information like, you know, don't jump into a vat of acid and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, I got it loaded up, got the computer running, and then I figured out I had to download some software from the Elgato site, which I did, and ran it, and that allows you to control the card. Um, but I found that the colours were all a bit funny, not right. They were weirdly dim and <clears throat> kind of some colours were worse than others, more saturated and so on. So by quite a long process of elimination, I found that I had to change the colours that are displayed on my screen using the actual screen controls and in my video card, NVIDIA card. I have an NVIDIA video card. In there I had to also adjust the colour rendition. So um, to get the recordings to look right I had to adjust the NVIDIA display adjust display colour settings setting um, and in there I went to NVIDIA settings for the Elgato screen. One screen is called HP whatever it is and the other one is Elgato now that this is plugged in because um, I'm recording on a second screen. The reason I'm using a second screen is because my original screen is um, 1920 by 1210 but YouTube likes 1920 by 1080 and the Elgato only records full screen. So I had it so I felt it best to get a screen which was the exact right size. Um, I didn't want you know, distortions and, and having it squashing the display when I upload it to YouTube or trimming it or anything like that. So um, on the screen, the Elgato screen, for the NVIDIA settings under display, adjust display color settings, NVIDIA settings, I found I got the most accurate recordings, going by my eye anyway. If I put brightness up by 60%, contrast up 42%, gamma I left unchanged at plus 1, vibrance plus 55%, and hue I left unchanged at 0. <coughs> um, now it still didn't look right on my screen, though, but the recordings on my original screen, they looked right. Um, <clears throat> but when playing back on the other screen they didn't look right still and I had to adjust the colors on the monitor so on the monitor you know if you press the buttons on the screen you have these menu systems I went into the bit I went into two places there I, one I went into the brightness in section and turned it up to 100% because um, this monitor is still a little dim compared with the other one and I don't know if that's the monitor or if it's the card um, it could easily be the monitor actually um, it has very, very accurate colour rendition, and that's why it was bought uh, for previous things. Um, whereas my normal monitor is perhaps a little over bright, really, and I should probably turn it down a bit. But anyway, I turned up brightness on this one, and I set... <coughs> you have the, uh, the colours in the colour section. You have RGB, and you can change the, the relative brightness of each of those by, by winding them down a bit, because they all start off defaulting at 100%. So I changed R, red, to 223. I changed green to 198. And I left blue at 255. And that makes the display colours correct. And I also tested that with a, a BBC TV test card, <clears throat> which actually gives me right colours on both screens. But still, my original screen looks a little bit oversaturated, so I might go and fiddle with that at some point. But those are the settings. 223-198-255 for the RGB. And on NVIDIA settings, brightness 60%, plus 60, contrast plus 42, and vibrance plus 55. And that's how it records. <clears throat> and they they look right to me on the screen, and they look right in the recording um, as well. Which is nice. Um, it's a bit of a shame that one has to mess about like that to get it to work though, but I suppose everybody's kit is different. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, 
you may have to do something similar on your setup. Um, so the NVIDIA display settings are so that it actually records with the correct colors and the RGB is so that it looks correct when you're actually watching it and playing the game <coughs> because the two are different things. The way it displays has nothing to do with the way it records. They're, they're separate processes. Um, one thing did surprise me, it shouldn't have really, but the file size is much, much bigger. I mean, when I was recording, I would normally get like an hour long video into one gigabyte, maybe a bit more. Um, but with this, but that, you see, it's obviously struggling to record and maybe doing at most 20 frames a second on a, on a turn-based game, say. But this one can do up to 60 frames per second. And to save file size, I'm only doing 30 frames a second. You can see what it's like on my um, Fallout Shelter videos. Those are the first ones I've recorded with it. Um, and it's nice and smooth. It's actually good. Um, but the file size is like 2 gigabytes, maybe sometimes a bit more, for half an hour. So it's like, you know, major, major disk storage requirements there. Because I do like to back everything up. Um, which means I've got like this three terabyte drive sitting around doing backups all the time. Um, <clears throat> and eventually I'll probably have to, well, I'll have to archive them onto drives, which I'll probably never look at again. But I just, for the sake of it, keep them all. Because if YouTube goes down the tubes, um, I will have to upload at least some videos elsewhere. I'll, I'll upload my vlogs. I'll probably leave most of the gameplay videos. Um, they're a bit throwaway in comparison, I suppose. Um, so, that's it. I hope that's, hope that's been useful. If you plug your card in and it doesn't work, well, wobble it around, all right, and try and make sure there's a good connection in the slot. It's very loose in the slot on mine, but once it's screwed in place, it can't move, so it, it has a connection. I expect if I move the computer, like move house or something, it'll, it'll break it the connection or something because computers hate being moved and loose connections are a big cause of hassle um, but at least I know what to do and I can always refer back to this video to remind me if I've forgotten <laughs> um, so um, hope that's useful okay. bye for now